All right, I'd like to welcome everyone who's uh, here joined us in person. I thank you for that, as well those of you who are joining us online this morning. I'm Michael Barber. I'm president of Branch 25 of the Royal Canadian Legion, uh, representing the San Francisco Bay Area, and we are here at Liberty Cemetery in Petaluma. Um, before we begin today, I'd like to recognize that the land we're on today is the traditional land of the Coast Miwok people. And in the Legion's efforts to uh, continue the uh, work towards reconciliation with our Indigenous people, we want to acknowledge the, uh, the land that we're on today. And uh, with that, I would call attention to our color party to uh, present the colors. I want to thank members of our um, United States Naval Sea Cadet Corps, Arkansas Division, who continually support us in our efforts. Um, next, uh, if you haven't, if you're not standing already, I would ask that you stand and maybe bear with us for about 15 seconds while we ready the national anthem. Thanks a lot. Let's <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
please be seated. For opening prayer, I'd like to call upon Comrade Vern Perry. Before we proceed, consideration of the business which we've all been brought together. Let us pause to think reverently of those of our comrades who by sea, who by land and in the air, lay down their lives for their sovereign and country. Their sacrifices will ever inspire us to labor on. To the end, that those who survive and need our aid may be assured of our assistance and that the country in which we live, and for which they die, may ever be worthy of the sacrifice they made. During the silence, we'll remember our fallen comrades and those who have passed on since we last gathered together. In particular, Andrew Bonfield and Hugh Chapman. Thank you, Conrad Perry. Next, I'd like to bring greetings on behalf of the Prime Minister. Today, we honor the women and men who served and continue to serve our country in times of war, conflict, and peace. We pause to remember their brave sacrifices and acknowledge a debt that we can never repay. We pay tribute to those who have lost their lives and those who have been physically or mentally scarred by their service, as well as their families and loved ones. More than 2.3 million Canadians have served in uniform since Confederation, and more than 120,000 have made the ultimate sacrifice. Thanks to their selflessness, dedication, and bravery, members of our military and police have been defending freedom, peace, and democracy, the values that we cherish deeply within our hearts. Canadians have also participated in international peacekeeping operations during which approximately 130 have given their lives and other military missions to protect the rights of others around the world and our way of life. These heroes embody the very best of what it means to be Canadian. This year also marks the 100th anniversary of the Remembrance Poppy in Canada. John McCrae's poem in Flanders Field had inspired Madame Anna Guerin of France to adopt the distribution of the poppy on the anniversary of the Armistice Agreement, which ended the First World War in 1918. This was her way to honor the war dead and to help raise funds to support those who had been impacted by the conflict. In July 1921, the Great War Veterans Association, a precursor to the Royal Canadian Legion, adopted the poppy as the flower of remembrance. 100 years later, Anna Guyan's vision lives on and the poppy still honors its pledge as an unmistakable symbol of remembrance. In this past year and a half, we have made life more difficult for many veterans. That is why last year, the government of Canada invested 200 million to create the Veterans Organization Emergency Support Fund, which helps over 40 organizations across the country support the well-being of veterans and their families during the COVID-19 pandemic. As we continue to keep each other and our communities safe from COVID-19, I invite all Canadians to watch the national ceremony at the National War Memorial in Ottawa, which is being live streamed on Facebook today. I also encourage everyone to visit online resources, to learn about Remembrance Day, stories of our fallen, and all the sacrifices that they have made for Canadians and people around the world. Today at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month, Canadians from coast to coast to coast will observe two minutes of silence to pay tribute to all those who have fallen. We'll be wearing red poppies close to our hearts, 
solemnly reflecting and thinking about those who served so courageously to keep us safe and gave their lives in the service of a better Canada. They have our respect, thanks, and heartfelt gratitude. Gratitude, lest we forget. The Right Honorable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. Next, I'd ask you to stand once again for the playing of the last post, followed by two minutes of silence, then the lament by our piper, Comrade Charlie Martin, followed by the, the Reveille.
I'd like to call upon our commanding officer, commanding officer for the world, or for the United States Navy Service Cadet Corps, Gabe, to bring the Act of Remembrance. And I just realized I've got this out of order here for you, Gabe. <laughs> there you go. They shall not grow old, or they shall grow not old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn them. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you, Gabe. For those of you that are familiar with the Royal Canadian Legion here in San Francisco, you know that this is our 90th anniversary this year in the Bay Area. As you can see from our group here today, we are a dwindling number, although uh, surprisingly, we've been able to maintain some active membership through the organization. On this particular day, I want to make mention of a couple of folks, and um, Comrade Perry has already named two of them. Uh, Andrew Bonfeld and Hugh Campion, who we lost this past year, uh, were both longtime members of the branch. Um, it's, I guess, a little fortuitous that Comrade Perry has actually joined us this year, because uh, it was uh, Hugh Campion who spent many decades actually maintaining the cemetery here at Liberty uh, with his uh, wife, Pearl. And uh, now uh, Comrade Perry Byrne has volunteered to continue these duties. And as you can see here from today, he's doing a wonderful job uh, with it. And I'm sure Hugh would be very proud that he's taken over for him. Similarly, as we go from year to year, this being our 90th, um, we start to look at all of those that we've lost in recent years, but also those veterans that we have that are still with us. In particular, uh, I'd like to mention two World War II veterans that we still have amongst our branch membership. Uh, Vern Gilman Gordon, uh, who goes by Gill, is a veteran of the 92nd Cavalry Division of the U.S. Army. Uh, he served in Germany and in Japan from 1944 through to 1946. Uh, he will be 96 later this year. Similarly, we have Joan Para, who was part of the Auxil Auxiliary Territorial Services of the British Army. She served in the United Kingdom from 1942 to 1946. She will be 97 approximately two weeks after Gill turns 96, actually. And we are very fortunate to have both of them as active members. Prior to uh, everything shutting down with the pandemic, when we were still meeting in person, both Gil and Joan would attend every single one of our monthly branch meetings. And we look forward to a time again when we can actually sit down and share a lunchtime meal over our business of the branch and have, joined, have Gil and jo Joan join us again. At present, we have about 42 members in the branch. 28 of those have served. 
basically two thirds of them are veterans themselves. I mentioned that for two reasons. Uh, one, to let you know how many veterans that we have, Canadian and British veterans that we have in the Bay Area. And if there are others that are out there watching either here today or on our live stream, uh, we welcome you to reach out to us and to uh, let us know, even if you're not interested in joining, uh, we still would like to serve uh, all the veterans in the area as best we can. The second is to let folks know that there are different classes of membership in the Legion, and you don't have to have been active service or a veteran in order to join. Uh, I myself am an associate member of the Legion. Uh, my grandfather was a World War II veteran, and I joined um, to honor his memory. Well, actually, I joined to honor him when he was still alive, and now that he's passed, to honor his memory. Um, but in our 90th anniversary, it takes We've been doing some looking back and thinking, and you'll notice here to my left, there's a, a flag that's a little bit different than the others. I think it shows up backwards on your end, but this was the flag of the Canadian Legion of the British Empire Service, the Northern Zone of the California Command. This was at a time when we had upwards of 17 branches in Northern California and several thousand members just in this region alone. Um, so if you are someone who is interested in helping veterans and serving the cause, we would welcome you to reach out to us. Um, with that, I notice our comrade Siefkin Krieger uh, has managed to beat traffic and uh, has uh, joined us here in a very fortuitous time because um, as you'll note from the program, he is next up on the agenda with the reading of In Flanders Field. Um, as Siefkin prepares himself there, I'll mention that historically at our Remembrance Day service, um, for as long as I've been a member, and I suspect as long as Siefkin has been a member, um, Hugh Campion was normally the one who would read uh, this poem here. And in Hugh's passing now, um, it's quite appropriate that we um, pass this on to our next longest serving veteran that we have amongst the group here today uh, was Comrade Krieger. So I'll pop Comrade Krieger up to the podium. In Flanders Fields by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, Canadian Army. In Flanders Fields, the poppies glow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard among the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with foe. To you, from falling hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you, Conrad Krieger. Next, I'd like to call upon one of our Sea Cadets to read in Flanders Field and Answer. And since I don't know their names yet, I'd ask that you introduce yourself when you come up. And since the program only mentions Cadet for the Lane of the Reef, which is next, if you could introduce your comrade, um, we will relay the reef as well.
Hello, my name is Stephen Apprentice Man, and our person laying the wreath is Nick Rest ye in peace, ye Flanders dead, the fight that ye so bravely. We've taken up and we will keep to faith with you who lies asleep. With each across to mark his bed, a copy is blowing overhead, where once his own life blood ran red. So let your rest be sweet and deep in Flanders' view. Fear not that ye have died for naught. The torch ye threw to us we caught. Ten million hands we hold it high, and freedom's light shall never die. We've learned the lesson that ye taught in Flanders' view. Next, I'd like to call upon Comrade Charlie Martin to deliver the closing prayer. Today, we remember and pay our respects to those comrades whose death we mourn, but whose spirit still lives. May we strive to promote unity and the spirit of comradeship Never forgetting the solemn obligation we have assumed as members of the Royal Canadian Legion and remembering them, may we ever pray, Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget. Lest we forget. Thank you, Comrade Martin. That brings us to the end of our service today. I'd like to thank those of you who joined us here in person and uh, our cadets once again for all of the great work that you guys do. Um, as you can see from our numbers, we'd be a small group without the ability to do a lot of this, uh, if not for your support and assistance uh, time and time again. Um, for those of you that are joining us at home, I uh, thank you for bearing with us. This is the first time we've tried a hybrid service where we've actually been live in person as well as streaming. Uh, I know we had a few technical glitches along the way and we're a little late starting, but uh, I thank you for joining us and hopefully this has been a, a rewarding experience for you as well. And uh, if for those of you that are here, I'd ask that uh, you stick around, we'll do a group photo uh, just before we go and uh, everyone is welcome to join us. We are heading out for a no host lunch uh, just down at the Applebee's just on Old Redwood Highway, which is just where you came up. And with that, I will say thank you, everyone, and goodbye.